Hello. Good afternoon and salamu alaikum. Greetings from Doha, Qatar. I hope everyone can hear me wherever you are in the world on behalf of Reach Out to Asia or ROTA as we are otherwise known. Welcome uh, to our inaugural Think Global at Local webinar, which today will discuss the topic of volunteerism as a pathway to engaged global citizenship. My name is George Tavola, and I'm the Ruta Engagement Manager, and I am joined today uh, by a wonderful panel of guest speakers. I'll be moderating this webinar, and to start with, for those of you who are not familiar with Rota, which is a program of the Education Above All Foundation. I'm just going to share a couple of slides just to give you an overview, a background, and what our mandate is um, related to the work that we do. So um, once again, welcome. Let me tell you a little bit about Rota. So if we could move to the first slide, I'll just give you a little background information about Reach Out to Asia. So ROTA was actually established back in 2005 as a then center under Qatar Foundation, uh, focused on providing access to quality education in countries around Asia, mostly after disaster, man-made or natural disasters. As you can see, since our inception, ROTA has provided education and training to over 1.5 million children and youth in over 15 countries in order to build their capacity to contribute to a sustainable future. In parallel, ROTA at the heart of our work has focused also on volunteering. Uh, ROTA has conducted meaningful and impactful volunteering programs that have engaged and inspired many thousands of volunteers to play active roles in addressing educational and development challenges in their communities here in Qatar and beyond in countries abroad. Now, in 2017, ROTA joined the Education Above All Foundation. If we could move to the next slide. Education Above All, or EAA is a global education foundation, again, focused on provision of quality education for many millions of children and youth around the world. As you can see from this slide, ROTA sits alongside three other core programs in EAA, namely Educate a Child, which is focused on getting millions of out of school children into a quality primary education. We have Alpha Hura, which has worked mainly in Palestine, but has rebuilt countless schools and provides educational scholarships to allow youth to achieve their potential, as well as Peace, which advocates for the protection and right to education in conflict affected areas around the world. So, since joining EAA, ROTA has focused on a new mandate. If we could move to the next slide. Our new mandate focuses on empowering youth, those are aged between 15 and 24, to be inspired and active agents of change through global citizenship education. While we have previously worked in this area of global citizen education, we've now focused exclusively on this demographic that is youth with a particular focus on marginalized youth that might be marginalized for social, economic, political, even environmental factors. But you might ask, what is global citizenship education? So we use a definition that builds on the work of other agencies such as UNESCO and Oxfam with a definition that Global citizen education, citizenship education, or GCED, involves any educational effort that provides the skills, knowledge, and experiences, and to encourage the behaviors, attitudes, and values that enable youth to be agents of long-term positive changes in their own lives and in their immediate and larger communities. Now, that seems like quite a mouthful, but what we'll be doing in this webinar is talking about how volunteering contributes to developing active global citizens. 
So we'll be talking, uh, we'll be unpacking this and defining the connection between the two ideas. Today, I'm joined by an incredible panel of guest speakers who I will now invite to introduce themselves, tell us where they're from, who they work for, and what they do. So if we could start with Caitlin. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, George. Uh, just want to say, first of all, thank you very much to our friends at Rota and EAA for organising this really topical and important discussion. I'm really pleased to be here with you. Uh, my name is Caitlin Sparks. I'm the Education Program Officer at the UNESCO Office for the Gulf States in Yemen, based here in Doha. I'm originally from Brisbane, Australia, about a thousand kilometres north of Sydney, uh, but I've been working here in Doha for the last three years. Uh, as many of you already know, UNESCO is the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation. My job is to assist our member states with education policy and planning, provide technical assistance and capacity building opportunities, uh, coordinate efforts uh, to achieving SDG 4 in particular, Sustainable Development Goal 4, and in general advocate for quality inclusive education around the Gulf. Uh, one of our key programmatic areas is actually global citizenship education and education for sustainable development. So we as UNESCO are very pleased indeed that Rota has um, as, as joined this uh, promoting GCED in the region and, uh, and uh, to, its, to its increased momentum here. So thank you very much for having me. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Lakeisha. Good afternoon, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Lakeisha Tillman, and I'm the International Education and Student Programming Officer for Virginia Commonwealth University School of the Arts in Qatar. I would really love to thank Rhoda for, uh, and George for inviting me here to share the space with you today. Um, I have been in Doha for the last 10 years, and um, I am originally from Los Angeles, California. Uh, it's my first move outside of the state of California. <laughs> so in my role um, as international education officer, um, I work with students with our service learning program here locally in Qatar and also internationally. Um, I'm also uh, the multicultural affairs uh, person for our office and student life and engagement where um, I do trainings on diversity, inclusion, um, equity, social justice, and activism. Um, and it has been a pleasure to be able to work with Rhoda through, throughout the years um, in my tenure here um, at VCU and also previously at Northwestern University in Qatar um, in student affairs. So thank you for having me today. Um, and I look forward to our, our discussion. Thank you very much, Lakeisha. Rose. Hi, everyone. I feel very privileged to be here alongside all of you. I'm Rose Abouliez. I'm joining you from Beirut, Lebanon. This is where I have been born and raised. And I'm currently working at a local organization called Arc en Ciel in the youth program. I work as a research and development officer currently. Um, our work in the program is to support youth at risk, marginalized youth and youth and children with disability in order to empower them and support them in being uh, active members of the society. Um, my work revolves around uh, doing projects, initi initiatives, uh, networking, and creating all sorts of innovative ways and, and, and things to support uh, youth. And it's really an awesome job and I've been really a volunteer for such a long time and this is mostly why I am the person who I am so thank you. Excellent, thank you very much Rose. Ahmed. alaikum everybody, thanks for having me, my name is Ahmed Langawi. I work for the Ministry of Trade and, uh, and Industry here in Doha, I was born and raised here in Doha. Um, um, I'm one of the members, that, the amazing members that you're allowed to have uh, as a Rota Youth Advisory Board Club and um, actually wearing many hats and I'm, I'm the founder of the Youth for Environment um, that actually brings uh, the sustainable development goals and try to localize it here in Doha, especially the pillars that comes from the environment um, perspective. Um, I'm very honored to be with you guys, uh, just sharing our experiences and uh, maybe talk more about volunteerism. Excellent. 
Excellent. Thank you very much, Ahmed. And thank you all for your introductions. We're very honored to have you all as, as members of this panel to discuss this interesting topic. Um, now, this webinar is the first in, in a series uh, connected to an initiative Rota is launching called the Think Global Act Local Initiative. Um, and I'll very quickly give you a quick overview of this initiative before we, uh, we go to the panel for the questions. So the Think Global Act Local Initiative is, is a volunteer initiative in which Rota partners partners with Qatar-based tertiary institutions like universities in order to contribute to the development of their students as active global citizens. So the initiative offers a range of purposeful activities uh, related to global citizenship, including training, uh, community-based volunteering, thematic webinars like this one, uh, global service learning when international travel is normalized, and, and celebrations of special UN days that are relevant to youth volunteering and global citizenship, all with the aim of inspiring tertiary students in Qatar by building their understanding of the world around them and empowering them to actively engage with their wider communities, with their immediate communities, their wider communities and the world. So this webinar is just the first activity that we're launching as part of this initiative and, and hopefully the first of many. So with that in mind, I think that's enough talking for me. I will move uh, to the panel of guest speakers and begin the questions. And we'll start with Caitlin from UNESCO. Um, and, you know, we gave a, a definition of uh, global citizenship education. But Caitlin, could you tell us how UNESCO defines global citizenship and, and what kind of initiatives around the world UNESCO supports related to GCED? Over to you, Caitlin. Sure, thank you, George. Yeah. Well, to begin with, um, I should say that UNESCO is the UN agency mandated to lead and coordinate the Education 2030 Agenda. Uh, as part of the drive towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, the Sustainable Development Goals, obviously, are a group of 17 goals that um, the global community came together and agreed upon back in 2015. The definition of global citizenship for the UN system emerges out of target or goal four on uh, inclusive, equitable education for all and target 4.7. If we can have this slide up on the screen, please, Ryan. Um, the definition uh, is a bit of a mouthful, like, like Rotas. Um, it says that by 2030, uh, we should ensure that all learners acquire the knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, including, among others, through education for sustainable development and sustainable lifestyles, human rights, gender equality, promotion of a culture of peace and nonviolence, global citizenship, and appreciation of cultural diversity and of culture's contribution to sustainable development. So there's a lot in there, um, but I think this definition really shows us how the global community has changed how it thinks about education uh, and the purpose of education. In years gone by, education was seen largely in economic terms. You get a good job, you get a, um, you get a good education, you get a good job, you contribute to the wealth of your family and your society. But SDG4 represents a shift away from that economic model towards an understanding of education as a public good, uh, concerned with the holistic development of the learner. So education is seen as something that enables a person to fulfill that potential, whatever that means to them, whatever it might look like, uh, and to be capable of and empowered to contribute to a more just and sustainable world. Uh, next slide, please, Ryan. So what does it mean to be a global citizen? Uh, global citizens feel a sense of belonging to a broader community. Uh, global citizenship involves recognizing political, economic, social, cultural, environmental interconnectedness between local, national and global domains. Conceptually, global citizenship education is framed around three key pillars. That's cognitive, socio-emotional and behavioral. Cognitively, learners must acquire knowledge, understanding, and be able to think critically about particular challenges, uh, things that could be like uh, deforestation, uh, refugee rights and protections, access to quality and affordable healthcare, global poverty, and so on. 
So what are the facts around those issues that can be arrived at through critical analysis? At the second level, at socio-emotional level, the learners must develop a sense of belonging to a common humanity. Um, they must see that there are shared values and responsibilities, uh, foster a sense of empathy and solidarity and respect for difference and diversity. So if we think about the problem of, of deforestation, for example, a global citizen understands that this problem affects many different groups of people in many different ways, um, and that these groups have different sets of responsibilities. The global citizen can empathize with others across borders uh, and stands in solidarity with those who are suffering. But the behavioral level, I think, is where the discussion meets with volunteerism. So at the behavioral level, learners must be able to act effectively and responsibly at local, national, global levels for a more peaceful and sustainable world. And this is where volunteerism meets global citizenship in this behavioral realm. You identify a problem, you understand the shared values and responsibility around it, and then you act. You find a way to contribute to the resolution of a problem. In the case of deforestation, we use this example again, a global citizen might sign up to be a volunteer to plant trees, or they could participate in a public awareness campaign. They commit their time, their energy, and their skills to being part of uh, the solution to the problem of deforestation in their community, knowing that all their local efforts contribute to a global effort. Uh, next slide, Ryan. I know that I'm nearly out of time. So I've just, uh, the last part of your question was the kinds of things that UNESCO does. Um, I've just chosen three little examples. Um, uh, the first one is uh, in Morocco, there was a, uh, a two year long project funded by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the, and the Moroccan authorities to promote the concept of peaceful coexistence among students in primary, middle and high schools. Um, the second example that I can give you is about the work of the Asia Pacific Center for International Understanding or APCU, which is a UNESCO category two center. And they recently launched the, their GCED online campus, uh, which contains a wide variety of resources for students, for teachers, uh, anybody in the general public to access uh, freely, um, which is a really wonderful resource. And I, and I encourage people to go and have a look at that. And the last uh, example is, is the launch of a very recent campaign called Think Before Sharing, which raises awareness of the existence and, and consequences of COVID-19 uh, conspiracy theories online. Uh, and encourages youth to think critically about what they share and tries to promote sort of empathy online. So there are three just quick examples, kind of different examples of what UNESCO is doing in the field of uh, GCED around the world. And I will stop there and let my other esteemed panelists take over. Thank you, George. Excellent, thank you for that really informative and comprehensive you know, insight into global citizenship education. Obviously, UNESCO really is the, the world's lead agency in promoting global citizenship education. And that really gives us, uh, uh, increases our understanding of, of the term, the concept and what it involves and the different levels of uh, areas within young people it develops. Um, so that's, that's really, really useful. Um, let's move over to Lakeisha from the Virginia Commonwealth University here in Qatar. And, and now we're kind of like helping define the idea of global citizenship. How does a university like VCUQ help develop their students as global citizens? Lakeisha. Well, George, our school is a liberal arts, art and design school. And uh, what we do is with our programs, um, our programs and this learning by doing, this ex experiential learning that we create at VCUQ, um, we address social issues through art and design. Um, our students take their creativity and their skills and, and learn by doing and through critique Re reflective inquiry and actively investigating um, the potential of social and cultural value uh, through the visual ideas and materials and methodologies that they use. This learning, uh, this way helps to strengthen how they justify their work and makes them better designers. Um, we have our liberal arts program that uh, promotes comprehensive intellectual and cultural social development. So they use their critical thinking skills, their writing skills, they learn through classes, through um, behavioral and social sciences, English, uh, physics, uh, focus inquiry. This liberal 
arts program prepares our students for a life as professionals and citizens of the world. Um, with our interior design um, program, they um, study theoretical principles of environment and behavioral sciences such as space and form, color, light, sustainability, communication. And uh, they use these to develop design solutions that address the health, safety, and welfare of a user's space. Um, with our graphic design st students, they, they come in as critical thinkers. They um, see a problem. They try to find solutions to solve it. Their role is to understand, create, and disseminate information to the world. They do this by you know, various campaigns, subliminal messaging, futurism. Um, our art history department uh, examines um, here in Qatar is in, 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 in the Islamic world, the Islamic art within a global perspective. Um, students are offered opportunities to study the complexity of cultural interchange that has formed the basis of our increasingly um, globalized modern and contemporary world. The curriculum that they have in art history takes on a more multicultural approach, a globalized approach. And with our fashion design, um, this embodies the idea and the attitudes of time that we, that, that we live in today and that fashion designers, they learn how to remake the world through their designs. They use this through sustainable materials, um, they use this in learning how to fashion merchandising, um, different body types and shapes. Um, and our MFA program, um, they are, uh, it's a design program. It's pretty organic, um, but they learn all of this um, interdisciplinary uh, ways of learning um, to be able to pick an area that's under a research problem. They, they take this problem, this societal problem, and they find ways in creating solutions to it. Um, we also have not just the learning inside of our classrooms, but outside of the classroom, which we're called like soft skills. And what I do in student affairs and my colleagues in student affairs is um, helping to students to gain leadership skills, communication skills, um, diversity, understanding diversity, inclusion, and equity by, um, you know, through clubs and organizations such as um, our Chit Chat Chai Club, which um, partners with our janitorial and um, security staff. Um, we have um, a student diversity and inclusion committee um, that they create programming for like Martin Luther King Week, um, International Education Week. They do discussions, safe space discussions with our campus community. Um, there's various different ways that we um, work here at VCUQ to create global citizens. Um, and you'll, you'll see this and I'll give even more examples as we talk about how we use our programs and our students learning for volunteerism and civic engagement um, throughout the world, even here in, locally in, culture, in Qatar as well. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much, Lakeisha. It's like really, really um, interesting to hear you, how you're approaching fashion and design through such a global lens and how you're developing students so holistically uh, in and outside of the classrooms. So thank you so much for that insight. Um, now we have two really experienced youth volunteers on, on the panel today. Um, Rota defines volunteering as performing acts of service for the benefits of others, uh, of your own free will and uh, without expectation of getting paid. Um, so we are very pleased to welcome Rose and Ahmed, who um, are youth volunteers who have been involved with Rota for some time. And I'd like to ask them if they could let us know uh, what kind of work you've been engaged in as, as volunteers. So if I could go to Rose first, then can you tell us a bit about your volunteering experiences? Okay, thank you. I, uh, I started my volunteering journey back in 2016 in a very small local group here nearby my house called Shabibi Sporting Club. That's how I found out about volunteering, about being engaged in a society from a different point of view. And then things 
started growing. And then eventually in 2017, I uh, was selected by Rota in the initiative uh, called MISHA, which is the MENA Youth Capacity Building uh, in Humanitarian Action. That's really where I had the chance to meet so many uh, Arabs and, and people from the Arab world. From, from Morocco up to uh, Qatar, all the way. Uh, we learned a lot, we shared a lot. Uh, we really got to share different perspectives, different similar challenges in different contexts. And that was really amazing. Uh, so in terms of volunteering, we also went a further step in that together with Rota, where we they created a youth advisory group uh, sub uh, came uh, from Misha. Um, and then this youth advisory group consisted of around 20 to 24 youth from across the MENA region where we used to talk frequently uh, and just out of volunteering, out of our own time on what are the challenges based on like three pillars, which are research, advocacy, and then uh, monitoring and evaluation cross cutted with media. And then we were split into groups working on that, trying really to come up with solutions or at least have closer perspectives on this. Um, so in terms of volunteering across the Arab world, that was really an amazing experience. Also, I've had the chance to work with different international organizations like coaches across continents where I've traveled and trained people and coaches on sports for social impact. Also, I've had the chance to go with Erasmus Plus, where I've had really a lot of good opportunity to have a lot of youth exchanges. And honestly, all of these experiences combined together, uh, like Lucretia was saying, have given me the soft skills I needed and the perspective I needed in order to come back to my community and become an active member of my community where I had all these global perspectives just right in my hand. I grew my personality, my skills, and then I was much more confident and at ease with my creativity to act locally. And so really after three, four years of experience, I was applying for a, also a volunteering uh, experience with the circus, something I really like, and then I found a job. So also all of this increased my employability drastically. So in terms of volunteering, that would be very simply and shortly my own experience and how it helped me uh, to become who I am and pursue the career that I'm very passionate about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rose, for a, a, a wide, diverse range of local and international volunteering experience. So thank you very much for sharing your experiences with us. Uh, moving to another superstar volunteer, Ahmed, can you tell us a bit about your volunteering journey? Well, honestly, after whatever Rose said, you know, there is nothing that I can add to, but mashallah, yani, um, this is one, one of the, you know, one of the examples that you can, you can guys see with, you know, working Volunteering is something that can change your whole life. You know, I started with Rota around 2014 or 15. And um, at the beginning, you know, I was kind of thinking, what, as, as you said, um, George, there is some, um, and I, I, I'll, I'll blame some organizations uh, about getting paid, you know, for volunteerism. That's something wrong. They, they, they put that interpretation uh, out there because uh, and some youth will be thinking, okay, should I volunteer to get paid or should I and then, you know, the whole perspective of volunteering will change. You know, when you go into the field and actually uh, get involved with your um, colleagues, your uh, the, the colleagues and volunteers, and, you know, some some experienced um, uh, people like you, George Hazem, and the whole team and Rota, you know, they, they teach us how and why would actually, you know, the term why is, is you know, is more accurate. Why are we doing this, you know? Um, is it for the, and, and you know that the simple answer will be will be the change you know just put change up there because you know whatever we are we gonna do it's either here in Doha or if we've done it uh, abroad it's something that we change and 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 uh, humans perspectives and humans life uh, uh, when it comes to the environment or or for the human it's something we're doing to change you know something to the better and to the good and whatever I found or whatever I've been involved uh, in, it changed me first of all, and then changed you know the 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 surroundings or the the activity I'm doing. 
Um, I've been working in so many um, volunteer uh, programs, uh, George, as you know. But, you know, one of the uh, main pro project or main um, activity I've done with you guys when I traveled with you to Indonesia. And um, at that stage, I was, um, you know, a youth um, who dropped from school, from university, um, who lost his twin brother and he was lost. You know, he was something, you know, out there. Um, but, you know, it showed, it showed me the, the light into the tunnel when I started seeing people that needs the opportunities nice. actually more than more than me. You know, it, uh, it showed me how grateful I should be for whatever I have, you know, in my life. And actually that I can actually change some someone's life. And um, I, I used to see I, I wasn't I wasn't that smart. or I, I didn't even have a, a degree, but, you know, I was giving them some some uh, English um, classes and they uh, and like teaching them some English and first aid classes. But they were very grateful. They was like you guys came from Canada, from Australia, from Doha, from all around the world just to give us this education, the key to to the next step in our life. And uh, Actually, that, uh, that uh, changed my whole life. And I started volunteering since then. And I never stopped. Uh, I never went back from there. Um, and, you know, growing, uh, growing into volunteering actually put us uh, with uh, great organizations and with the great institutions uh, uh, that can lead us, you know, to, to actually localize the, the, the challenges that we have globally and actually see that whatever challenges that we have here locally that we can actually compare it to whatever is happening globally and uh, have some projects uh, running into, into SDGs, into our Qatar national vision and just put youth out there and try to give them um, the, the, right, the right path, uh, which is Rota and uh, UNESCO and all of you uh, combined. You know, the partnerships is very, very key and uh, important goal in the SDGs. And uh, I guess that's, that's what's going to push the, the agenda, inshallah. Wow. I can speak forever, by the way, by this can yeah, see, you know. Rose and Alfred, <laughs> you're getting me emotional, honestly. Um, hearing uh, both of your experiences is truly inspiring. And, and, and I'm sure uh, people watching this feel the same way. Um, so thank you so much for sharing those, those volunteering experiences. Uh, the impact of volunteering is incredible. So I, I just want to shout out to all the volunteers uh, watching all the Rota volunteers who we've worked with over the years and around the world. Um, so that really brings us to, you know, the key question of, of today's webinar, and, and that is how can volunteering uh, develop these values, attitudes, and behaviors Caitlin was talking about related to global citizenship? You know, these, these um, qualities like creativity and innovation and a dedication to peace, human rights, and um, sustainable development. Uh, so, so that is really the, the, the key question. Let's let's talk about the connection between volunteering and global citizenship. How can volunteering be a pathway to active and engaged global citizenship? But we'll go back to Caitlin to start the ball rolling with um, this important question, Caitlin. Sure, thank you, George. And thank you, Rose and Ahmed, for sharing your experiences. That was really cool to hear uh, what you guys have accomplished over the years. Um, so for me, I think volunteering, the, the act of volunteering, the committing your time and energy and skills to a cause that's bigger than yourself is, is a really powerful demonstration of global citizenship. Um, volunteers are motivated by a set of values and ethics that guide their decisions and actions, uh, leading them to become proactively engaged in their local communities and their global initiatives. Um, I think volunteers often show really great networking skills. They're able to really tap into um, the knowledge of their peers, into civil society, NGOs and other, other elements of society. I think they're often really creative and entrepreneurial um, because yeah. they have to be resourceful, right? You have to be resourceful. And you have to think outside the box to get things done with perhaps really limited resources. Um, I think volunteers play a really important role in, in contributing to the identification and analysis of some of the needs and priorities in their communities as well. Um, often because they come from outside 
of a particular yeah. organization. They've got fresh eyes. They can see things from a new perspective. Um, and so I think also skills in negotiation and communication and advocacy are really, they come to the forefront of the volunteer's life and they, through those skills, inspire other people to act. So, so volunteers, I mean, they do it for themselves and you do it for others. Um, and by the enthusiasm that you show, you bring other people on board. However, I do think... Um, for me, coming from an education background, the question of whether volunteering helps develop the values of global citizenship or whether education helps develop global citizenship values that lead to becoming a volunteer, I mean, that's a, I think we can instill those, those values, um, behaviours, skills, attitudes and so on from a very early age at the school level. And then I think you have a greater chance of, of uh, people finding themselves in volunteering positions because they want to be part of that change. And they, this is something that makes them feel, you know, that they gain some satisfaction from and some sense of reward from. So I think there's a mutual relationship. Volunteering, um, you know, amplifies those knowledge, values, attitudes, skills, but also if you instill those knowledge, values, attitudes and skills at an early age, I think it's mutually reinforcing. So that's what I would say now. Yeah. Uh, yes, excellent. Thank you so much for that answer, Caitlin. And it's like the chicken and egg kind of situation. You know, does volunteering make people better global citizens or does, you know, being a, a, a global citizen minded person make you more likely to volunteer? And I think that, like, as you said, is goes both ways. It's mutually reinforcing and it's a, it's a great way of framing that connection. Yeah. So um, we'll move to Lakeisha. And Lakeisha, how, how do you propose that volunteering and service learning, some many of the things that you do at VCUQ um, help create uh, global citizens, this idea of engaged global citizenship. Well, I agree with Caitlin with the educational component. Um, I've been on many a service learning trip where we take the students out of the country and we go and we go to different villages, we go different places and have these experiences, but I think the educational component is what needs to start first. Hence, you know, partnerships with Rhoda and uh, your your uh, global citizenship program um, to educate our students before we do go out. Um, we have had experiences though that have um, really transformed our students' life, and I, I experienced this. It was a inside the classroom and outside the classroom experience uh, when um, I hosted my students and we went on a trip to Athens, Greece. We partnered with our GLOBE um, program from our main campus to students from our main campus and our students here at VCUQ, where we went to Athens, Greece. Um, we went to three different um, NGOs and uh, did service there. Um, one was City Plaza Hotel, which is a hotel that was basically taken over uh, by refugees. Um, and we did some um, providing some service that day with providing lunches and just having um, a conversation with um, the refugees and their experiences. Um, we also went to the Paparaki group uh, where they have um, stored all of these donations um, from all over the world where our students provided um, the um, unloading an 18 wheeler truck of donations in, in the distribution center. And then the final one was the um, Zatar, it's the Orange House Project where we met um, David, a Syrian volunteer who told us of his harrowing story about his journey from Syria to Greece. Um, and having our students being able to go and do this work was transformative for them. Some of them, this is the first time that they have um, experienced homelessness because some, uh, even in Qatar, sometimes the mask, we don't see that, right? Um, and, our, and having a conversation with my Qatari student about it, you know, people really live like this and, and I'm like, yeah, they do. Um, and um, to have that right there in front of their face gives them a different perspective, um, understands, helps them to understand privilege. Um, and 
get to them the knowledge that, okay, I need to look in my community and have my eyes a little, you know, more wide open as to what's going on um, to where they've started initiatives here in, in Qatar with um, the Nepali Workers Association, our um, painting and printmaking students. They uh, take the learning they've learned in the classroom and um, they work with the Nepali Workers Association where they bring um, a busload of, of workers to our campus on a Friday afternoon and teach um, drawing and painting um, courses with them. Um, and the students are actually learning by doing, learning what they yeah. have, have been taught in the classroom, but then going um, and teaching um, to, to someone else who may not have had that opportunity. We also have had uh, our students have the opportunity to um, have experiential learning. Um, they go um, and do field study trips um, th around the world. Um, to learn about their different programs and disciplines, but it also teaches them, um, well, I, I learned this in my class, but now I'm actually here in the country or visiting the museum where this artwork is. And we had that experience in Greece. My art history student was like, we're at the Acropolis, we're at Mars Hill. These are things I learned in my art history class and I'm here. You know, they, just seeing the world, having that experience has really formed and shaped them. Um, but it has given them a different worldview, a different, um, more globalized view than just being in their own spheres. I always tell students to look outside of yourself. First, look inward, do look inward, um, but then look outside of yourself. Have a conversation with um do you when you walk down the hallways in the in the building do you say hello to um, our custodial staff workers do you say hello to our security staff workers so um it's it's a matter of them um just having a different perspective learning and taking the time to be more civic minded um to be a community builder we have done volunteer um uh, initiatives here at BCU during the pandemic. Uh, students and faculty designed and produced vests for the Ministry of Public Health volunteers. We've um, made infant face shields um, for the primary um, healthcare center for the infant ward. Um, we have done um, an exhibition called Good Vibes and, and people, faculty, staff, and students turned in um, artworks and poetry and um, all the different types of uh, you know, made items to express how they're feeling throughout the pandemic. Um, we've, we have an art therapy program for um, kids who, you know, are having um, difficulty processing. Our students are teaching these classes. So we find it very important to see these societal issues and global issues and to have a way to help solve them through our students' skills and talents and gifts of art and design to find these solutions. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that answer, Lakeisha. I mean, you really are developing values, attitudes, and behaviors um, ac across the board. I mean, we talk about global citizenship as this, this very broad umbrella of so many different elements. Um, but, you know, you, you are really looking at it in so many different ways through this kind of global citizenship yeah. lens. And I think and um, even through yeah. even through our MFA program as well, um, we have students who um, Nirvana Hijazi, she's re, she redesigned women's jewelry to help manage symptoms of anxiety. Ali Akaria uh, fused technology with indigenous solutions to facilitate thermal comfort, creating oh. a a, jack, a jumper for um, our workers in construction sites that helps to cool them down. Um, we're, we're doing that here. <laughs> it's happening here at BCU. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you for tying in the COVID-19 pandemic as well, because we haven't really touched upon that, but there's no more global issue than what's happening right now in the world. And, and I think um, even preventing international travel doesn't necessarily 
in you know hinder the idea of developing this global perspective on the world um, if anything it, it, it actually helps people see the connections between all of us um, so let's move over to rose and if you have any thoughts to share about linking volunteering and this idea of becoming a, a global citizen rose I'm I'm really inspired by all of what I've heard and so many memories have came across my mind out of my personal small personal experience of course but seriously when when you are just growing up and I was very far away from society just really worried about myself living my childhood etc and then around you know my 20s I started being more involved in society all of this and I just started things really just happened by coincidence for me and then it started rolling but seriously ju just hearing that you think that I'm someone in Lebanon living all of these you know uh, struggles all of this then you think okay maybe Spain is better I lived in Spain for one month volunteering with the Olympics and I had the chance to meet so many Spanish people and Mediterranean people in there and I saw that we basically all have the same problems whether we are women whether we are whatever but I mean that the ratio differs maybe here it's more of a struggle there it's kind of less of a struggle but the struggle is still the same I went to Georgia and I saw that, okay, well, in, in the countryside, in the small villages, I mean, they are different minded, just like people in Beirut and people in the villages. So I saw, oh my God, this is, we are just humans projecting the same thing. I've learned so much through this volunteering. And then all of these perspectives made me realize something really important is that regardless of this appearance or this uh, ge geographical location, we are on this planet. We mostly have more or less the same problems. And just, we have, we have examples of success and examples of uh, tragedy because when society learned how to le uh, work collectively, we, the, this society was able to develop itself and become better. But when everyone was segregated and just looking elsewhere, not to the society, that's where we saw no improvement. And that's key, that's volunteering key. I don't want to repeat what my, my co colleagues already said, but this volunteering really creates this persona of someone that have seen you know, different perspectives, whether you volunteer in your own country or elsewhere, that's where you really see perspectives and that will really give you a push. For example, how, how can I con concretely, for example, do this related to my work. In my work, I work on designing initiatives and projects and getting funds to do the work we want to do. And so I go back, I sit with myself and I'm like, okay, I've seen this happen here in Australia. I saw that in Lebanon, I saw an initiative in the Bekaa Valley that could be relevant to Beirut. And so all of these ideas enable me and the team to bridge ideas and then bridge these global ideas that prove to work because we are all humans acting on these ideas. And then we bridged those ideas. The second mission was to make it local because maybe something worked in, in Sri Lanka, but maybe it wouldn't work in Beirut because we have a different culture. So the creativity comes here. How can we insert this new model of behavior into a local context? And I would have never, I think, had this perspective uh, if I didn't volunteer and if I didn't see other humans in different places whether in my own country or elsewhere so really volunteering I think is essential to build a more resilient a better society that cares about each other and that looks over personal uh, personal um, things especially coming from Lebanon I come from a country where we have one of the most corrupt governments on this earth in human history. And that's why our society doesn't know. Learning this made me love my country even more and made me see the potential in what my country has rather than leaving my country and working elsewhere. So uh, really I can never stop about talking but volunteering played a huge role in really putting all of these ideas here and giving me this light and power in order to serve 
the society through what I do. So uh, over to you, George. Sorry if I took some time. No, not at all. Thank you so much for that answer, Rose. Honestly, um, like uh, you, both you and Ahmed said, we could talk all day about volunteering because you've explained some of you know, the, the many benefits uh, individually and collectively of, of volunteering. And you know, uh, only some really directly inform this idea of global citizenship, but, you know, uh, volunteering can uh, have so many benefits at so many different levels. Um, so let, let's move to, to Ahmed and, and ask, uh, again, the same question. How, how can these benefits of volunteering help develop you as a active, engaged global Well, let me, let me just wrap it up with that. Uh, by, by volunteering, I actually uh, became more responsible, you know, and by being responsible towards your community and towards the world, you become a, a, a global citizen. And that's exactly what happened with you guys, you know, like you gave us the platform to volunteer and to interact with the different minds, the different people, different societies. And we saw that perspective from different people and we start our discussion through your programs. And I, I don't want to praise Rota, and I can't praise them enough, to be honest, because the platform that they gave us and how, how they made us through their programs, um, people like youth that can engage with other youth all around the world uh, to bring this global citizenship thinking into our country and actually start doing like you know for for uh, as an example you know to to work uh, towards environmental uh, issues actually here in doha we start pushing um, uh, policies and governments and you know i i, I would never think about uh, doing something like that four or five years ago but actually being with the, around the people the right people uh, all my friends and colleagues and uh, um, having those glo global issues and uh, transforming them into here our our local um, challenges as well um, made us you know the global citizenship that you all um, are talking about and um, as I said I can't I can't uh, talk enough about it but as you say as, as I mentioned it's, it's something between being uh, responsible enough towards your community and uh, the global um, community as well excellent thank you so much Ahmed for sharing um, you know, volunteering brings people of all different walks of life together, of, often with a common interest to, to give back to their community. But, you know, whatever intention people come into volunteering with, they often benefit in, in ways that are unexpected and that develop themselves personally at an individual level and helps, uh, as Rose was saying, build these bridges um, between uh, themselves and others, other communities and cultures, but also between ideas, uh, ideas between things that can work locally and impact uh, at a global level. So uh, I, I have to say I'm completely inspired um, by, by all of your responses today. Um, I, I noticed that there has been a comment about um, how, how people can learn more about your uh, respective areas, if there's any um, social media you'd like to share or any any final kind of um, just words of advice for people to, to get involved and, and, and get engaged. So perhaps we'll just go uh, just around the panel one more time uh, with a surprise question, uh, just to ask you, what would be your final words uh, of closing to audience members um, to get engaged? So let's start again with Caitlin. Thank you, George. Thanks for the, the question. Um, I, I might just speak from the UN perspective. Um, people listening may know that the UN has a volunteer agency. It's the UNV. Um, and I believe you need to be, one, above 18 years old and, two, have completed uh, an undergraduate degree. So that's uh, just as an upfront but uh, I would fully encourage anybody who, who would like to be a volunteer with the UN system, who has skills that they would like to, that they can share or um, uh, would like to contribute somehow to some place around the world to go and have a look on the UNV website. They've got some great uh, little clips that indicate, uh, that show some of the projects that their volunteers have been involved in over the years. It might be to do with infrastructure. It might be to do with IT. It might be to do with, 
all sorts of things. So um, from a UN perspective, I would, I would fully encourage that. And the other thing is to look out for internships. Um, internships are, you know, slightly different than volunteering sometimes, but um, I believe they have the, maybe the same kind of impetus behind them to contribute uh, and to learn and to, you know, um, share your skills. And yeah, so I, I would say internships in the UNV from a UN perspective um, and just just keep trying and get out there and um, yeah, do your best. Excellent. Thank you very much for those wise words, Caitlin. Um, Lakeisha, what would be your final message to any young person watching this, thinking about the value of volunteering and getting involved? Um, my thing first, it starts with being a lifetime learner. Um, first about self, get outside your own sphere. I always do this uh, activity with my students and say, okay, put your hand up. These are all your beliefs and values outside. You can see them. But when you go like this, now I can see George, I can see Caitlin's, I can see all everyone else's. So get outside of your sphere and go and have a conversation with someone who's different from you. I would say, open your eyes in your community, see what those issues are and try to find ways to have a, a, a dialogue with, with the people there to see what their needs are. Don't come in as the person where I'm just gonna go and help these people. No, you need to have a dialogue and see what their needs are and see how you can be of a, a resource of support, be an ally to, to folks and um, go out and, and help and do. Um, some of my students have done their own grassroots organic campaigns uh, of fundraisers, um, going out and just delivering waters to um, workers on construction sites from, with their own money. They've done this on their own. So uh, just go out and have uh, see, learn, do is what needs to be done. Thank you so much, Lakeisha. The idea that you don't have to wait for anyone to change the world. You can just go out there and do it. I love it. Rose, what would be your final comments to uh, uh, share with the audience? Can you hear me now? Yes, we yes. can hear you now. Yeah, I have so much to say. Really inspired. A lot of things on my mind. But I'd say... To everyone, just remember that if you want to volunteer, you can go to so many different places. The web is really, you'll find so many things, but just remember that it's always awesome to just start from within. Sometimes you'd be walking on the street and you can see an old person, you can just help them with the bags and that's more than enough. And sometimes you need to do more. Just look, whatever you're doing, if you have volunteered before, encourage other people to volunteer because you know what this means. And if you haven't volunteered yet, well, I don't know what better you could be doing in your spare time because the computer, the internet, the technology will not run away. It will always exist. But the life experience will only be found through this kind of initiatives through this kind of work it will change anyone's life and it will leave you somewhere where you have never imagined you'd be and you never thought that you'll arrive there and that's re really out of experience i'm saying this so i just really want would like to encourage everyone to do a different step in a different way uh, outside of their comfort zone so that's about it Excellent. Thank you so much for that. I can I can feel the energy of that message uh, for sure. So thank you very much. Ahmed, what would be your last words of advice for the audience? Well, I, I hope it's not the last one on, on, on volunteerism, but you know what? Just start, uh, start whatever you want to do. Just go out there and start volunteering. You can volunteer by just putting out a smile out there. You know, so, some yeah. people might be on struggle on the streets and if you yeah. give them a smile, yeah, yeah, yeah. they will feel better, you know. So just trying to change people's life into the better, change your life into the better. And that's uh, how you're going to learn about volunteerism. Excellent. Thank you all so much for your inputs to this very, very timely discussion. Um, that brings us to almost the end of our webinar. I hope 
people watching have increased their understanding of how powerful a tool volunteering can be to inspire and empower young people as global citizens to, to get engaged in their communities, in the larger society, and indeed the world. Um, the former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said, you have to take ownership and leadership of tomorrow. Yeah. And to make that possible, you have to develop your capacity and widen your vision as a global citizen. And volunteering is one very effective way of achieving that. On that note, I would like to sincerely thank our esteemed panel members today, Caitlin Sparks, Lakeisha Tillman, Rose Abuelias, Ahmed Alengawi. Thank you so much for your time today. I am sure everyone has benefited from you sharing your thoughts and experiences. On behalf of Rota and EAA, I'd like to thank all our audience for joining us today on this webinar, this very first Think Global Act Local webinar, and we look forward to seeing you next time. So on behalf of Rotor and EAA, thank you. Goodbye. Masalama. Thank you. Thank you.